Toxicity is very addictive. And Karenyamu seems to be very toxic. So does Samito. So when the two come together, it just combusts, you know? I almost pity her. I know as women, we do what we need to do to keep our families together. And sometimes we do it at our own detriment. If you're to have more women, multiple women, the first wife must always be respected. The first wife must always be respected. You do not in any way, shape or form allow somebody else to embarrass your wife. That, that is just, that is actually, it speaks volumes actually of you as the man, not even of those other chicks you are with. And so for him to allow somebody to publicly disrespect his first wife, that's just strong on so many levels. And it actually shows that he's not able to handle his women, okay? And another thing is that for women who choose to be second wives or mistresses or whatever, just stick to your lanes. Know your lanes and stick to them. Number one, never think you're going to replace the first wife, ever. Quandoto, it's never going to happen. <laughs> sharing is caring. Anyhow, uh, maybe that's what I should have titled this video, sharing is caring. <laughs> her to admit that she does not have shame is very telling that she might be going through some trauma of some sort or she has gone through some trauma of some sort I guess I've seen some people online uh, comparing Karen Yamu to Delilah and uh, what's her name Jezebel <laughs> and saying that that's how great men fall so yes depending on how he chooses to carry out this relationship it might actually be his downfall remember to like share and subscribe thank you this video is speculation not fact hi there hello and welcome to my channel so today's video is a bit different it's different from what you're used to and it's an unpopular opinion <laughs> don't come for my neck all right now let me say this before i go into the topic all right i'm not doing this to bash either of these women I'm not doing this to compare either one of them. I'm not, uh, this video is not about justifying uh, whatever they are doing. I, honestly, it's none of my and any of our business. I'm only using this as a teachable moment. So yeah, class is in session, I guess. <laughs> so anyway, oh, another thing, uh, I'll be undoing my hair so we'll chit chat as I undo my hair and I don't have any makeup on. Okay, I've done my eyebrows and my lipstick. I'm going to get a facial later on. I have some breakouts coming in and I wanted to address them before they get any worse. Hence, the reason why I'm looking a bit bare-faced today, but hey, still looking pretty, so. <laughs> All right, so, Samido, uh, what's her name? <laughs> Is it Ede or Ede? You know, the Kikuyumi wants to say Ede. <laughs> So Samido, Ide, and uh, Karen Yamo. That throuple or that dynamic is um, has been quite a bit of an entertainment for us for the last, I'd say, a year or so. And uh, every day there's something new about them. And I mean, it's free entertainment, so we might as well. Anyhow, so this is what I have to say. A moment. Ah. So I'll be undoing my, I'll be chucking the buns. Let me just mention this. I'll be chucking the buns, undoing the braids, and then I'll spray. This is just water, plain water. And then this is a mixture of several oils. So I'll oil this. My, I'll oil my scalp with this, all right? So let me first do a general analysis of my perception about the tree, right? Now, when it comes to Ide, again, <laughs> when it comes to Ide, I... I think she's very chill she seems very chill very level-headed but i must admit that um, she comes off the whole fiasco makes her come off as though she has very low self-esteem and very low boundaries if any at all that's one um then when it comes to karen Yamu, um she's a bit of a firecracker i must say i mean clearly she is <laughs> But my general perception of her is this. By the time a woman says that she has no shame, or rather it, they, she has a lot of things, but the only thing she does not have is shame, that to me reeks of trauma. Because who, regardless of whether you're a man or a woman, shame is something that is very important in terms of how we carry ourselves as human beings. So for her to say that she does not have shame, for her to admit that she does not have shame, is very telling that she might be going through some trauma of some sort, or she has gone through some trauma of some sort um, to make her behave in such a way, all right? 
Then there's Sami Dobwe. That guy, I, I don't know, men. I don't know, call him for a meeting, call him for a... Because this, this, this that's not how you do polygamy. If that's the route he has chosen to take, that's not how you, you do polygamy. He should borrow from, what's his name? Atoli. Um, he seems to have hacked the formula for polygamy. So maybe Atoli needs to call him for a side and, you know, teach him a thing or two about, about how to go about it. Now, to the unpopular opinion. I do get the appeal. Um, I do get the appeal that Karen Yamu has to Samido. And again, remember the caveat, I'm not in any way trying to compare the two women or pitting them against each other. We are not doing that here. This is not what this channel is. But oh, I forgot to undo my hair. Moshene got to my head. <laughs> so um, I do get the appeal that is Karen Yamu. Other than the fact that, of course, she needs, she genuinely, I personally feel that she genuinely needs counseling because that's not normal. How she behaves and how she um, just goes off, that's not normal. But anyway, that's aside. I feel that, um, that aside, there's something to be said that even in her craziness, she's the most authentic person. And... I'm not saying that women are not authentic, but authenticity or an authentic woman is quite appealing to a man, even in her madness or in her craziness. Authenticity is something very um, appealing to a man. So that's one. Number two, obviously she's very beautiful. Men are visual creatures, so she's quite beautiful. So that again is something else that um, is quite appealing about her. And let's be honest, she takes care of herself. She takes care of how she looks, how she dresses, her body. I mean, she goes to the gym and all that. So clearly, she takes time to take care of, uh, of how she. Oh, she clearly she takes time to take care of her body. So um, beauty is something that is quite appealing for her. Another win. You can be putting ticks if you want. <laughs> also, I've checked all. They have I checked everything. Oh, they're still a couple. Yeah. Oh, these are my daughter's hair bands. <laughs> Sharing is caring. Anyhow, uh, maybe that's what I should have titled this video. Sharing is caring. <laughs> Anyhow, so, so number one, I said um, she's authentic. Number two is that she takes care of her body. She's quite beautiful, actually. Very beautiful figure. Goes to the gym, dresses very nicely for her body. So obviously that the visual, physical appeal is there. Uh, number three is that she's quite playful. She's the most playful. Actually, she she seems very. She's very playful. And the thing about being playful, you know, guys, I mean, by the time they're going out to hustle, to I mean, the world is already hard and harsh on them. So at the end of the day, they want somebody whom they can almost be a kid with, you know. And that playfulness comes in very handy for us women yeah and so for her she's very very playful she's very you know fun to be around of course she takes it to the extreme that said she's very fun to be around so i can actually imagine samido being you know um at ease around her calling out the boy in him i don't know how to explain it <laughs> maybe men you can help me here but he it kind of like she draws the boy out in him and again that's quite appealing because i mean like i said the world is already tough and harsh for for our men out here uh, you know hustling drink, taking care of us uh, chasing paper and all these other things so at the end of the day they want a woman who can be quite playful um and and you know just make the day fun you know and that's to me she seems to be the most playful very she seems to be very playful um now when it comes to the missus, the goat wife. <laughs> when it comes to the missus, this is what I can say about her. You know you can't give a man ultimatums. At the end of the day, a man wants to feel that they made a choice out of their own volition. Yes, sure, you can express your desires. But at the end of the day, men do not like to be told what to do. In that sense they do not want to be given an ultimatum even when they are doing wrong they do not want to be given an ultimatum and if he has chosen to go this path i know he she said a good wife said that this she is not um, into polygamy fine granted that's the owners i mean it's her life so she can choose not to be in it but you know you can't force a man to do what 
you want him to do at the end of the day a man will do what he wants to do and if this is the path he has chosen to go in it's not for her to decide whether to stay or to leave all right i'm not i mean it's her life again but she has to make that concession whether she's going to stay or she's going to leave and at the end of the day again you find that um yes he might end up regretting it later that remains to be seen but in the moment this is the lifestyle he has chosen to to, to leave this is the this is the she's he has chosen to actually pick this other woman so it's now on the first wife to actually decide is this something that she wants to put up with or not okay so the onus is on her to decide whether she's going to stay or leave and um if she wants to stay then she has to make do with the fact that the husband is not a polygamist she must she has to make do with the fact that the husband is, is publicly um showcasing this other woman and i know yes that is that wound that must really wound her ego and that must really wound her self-esteem uh so whether or not they are together it's not really a good picture you know um at the end of the day again you find that human beings at the end of the day will do whatever they want to do and there's nothing you can do to force them they might listen to you momentarily and especially when they realize they've lost you but he seems amido seems to have made up his mind that you know he's sticking by karen he's sticking by karen so it's now the 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 first time to decide whether this is something that she wants to live with or not okay and There's something I find a bit how can I put this not worrisome per se but I almost pity her I know as women we do what we need to do to keep our families together and sometimes we do it at our own detriment I have this friend who once told me something profound the Bible yes I'm preaching praise the Lord <laughs> In the Ten Commandments, there's this one commandment that talks about, you know, do not kill. But what we do is, we do it to ourselves. Emotionally, we kill our emotions, we kill our self-esteem, um, we kill our dreams by what we choose to put up with and the people we choose to associate with. And I feel that in this case, the first wife, Ide, has actually killed her self-esteem to a degree. I feel that she has lost herself in this melee, okay? And I really wish she would take pause and really ask herself what she wants out of life and what she wants out of this interaction or relationship with Samido because clearly it's one thing to want your family to be intact but at what cost? So that is something that only she can answer. That is only something that only she can decide how much is too much for her. And at the end of the day, you realize the kids are watching. The kids are actually in the mix of all this. So they are actually the ones who are feeling this more than anybody else. Okay? And you don't know the type of trauma that um, the kids are having to experience because of this experience, because of this whole um, issue. And does it mean that if she left, it's going to be any easier? And does it mean, or does it mean if she stays, then he's going to come back to his senses i mean that that's up to samido to decide frankly there's nothing that ide can do to make him change his mind it's all he's an adult so it's up to him to decide what he wants but what i can say is this part of protecting our kids is doing right by them part of protecting our kids is doing the things that break our hearts okay and Sometimes that might mean separating with your spouse. Sometimes that might mean parting ways with your spouse. So maybe that is a solution. I don't know. Anyway, that's, <laughs> that's for her to decide. But at the end of the day, I, I feel that her self-esteem has really taken a blow because of this. I feel that her self-image has really taken a blow uh, as a result of this. Because I'm sure she has compared herself. Even if we are saying and we will not, I'm sure she has compared herself to Karen and has wondered what is it that Karen has done and what is it that she lacks that has made Samido go to Karen. I'm sure she's done that, which which is very sad to imagine because she's a beautiful woman. She seems to be very level-headed. She seems to be a very good mom. And while we are all different, people will do what 
they want to do because of their own reasons and no matter how many ultimatums we give them no matter how many times we try to reason with them no matter how many times we even pray and fast for them sometimes you have to be realistic that human beings will do what they want to do and a lot of the time it has nothing to do with us and everything to do with them and i'm actually wondering now to samido what is overcompensating for I, gen I genuinely, genuinely wonder what is overcompensating for. Because if you look at it wholesomely, I'm not trying to say that he has upgraded or downgraded by, by being with Karenyamu, but I'm genuinely curious um, if he actually enjoys the drama. Because the people who feed off of drama, yeah? The people who feed off of drama, and this could be it for him this could be the type of drama he is craving for and so having this dynamic um, is what gives him an ego boost perhaps uh, this might be what might be helping him to overcompensate for something I don't know I don't know him so but it's it's a really interesting and sad at the same time dynamic um, the other thing is when it comes to Samido, like I was saying, he needs to be called by people like Atoli to be taught how to do uh, polygamy properly. <laughs> because clearly it ain't for him. Clearly it ain't for him. You need to be able to, first of all, if you're to have more women, multiple women, the first wife must always be respected. The first wife must always be respected. You do not in any way, shape or form allow somebody else to embarrass your wife. That that is just that is actually it speaks volumes actually of you as the man, not even of those other chicks you are with. And so for him to allow somebody to publicly disrespect his first wife, that's just strong on so many levels. And it actually shows that he's not able to handle his women. Okay. And another thing is that for women who choose to be second wives or mistresses or whatever, just stick to your lanes. Know your lanes and stick to them. Number one, never think you're going to replace the first wife. Ever. Quando auto. It's never going to happen. That's one. Number two, when you choose to behave in such a manner that embarrasses not just yourself, but also embarrasses <coughs> excuse me, embarrasses your husband and embarrasses the wife, it's like it, it makes actually people wonder what was he seeing in her. So it's not a really a good look. Okay. And I, I really, sometimes I read um, Ide's uh, texts and not texts. I, sometimes I read Ide's, um, what do you call them, social media posts. And it's really sad. It's really, really sad. You almost want to go hold her hand and just tell her sees. Like, really? Really? Uh-uh. It could never be me. <laughs> That's what you say until it happens to you, right? <laughs> but yeah, it could never be me. I think my ego is just to another level that mm -mm, it could never, never, ever. But anyway, if you choose to be in that lifestyle as a woman, as a second wife, as a mistress, as whatever it is, yeah, please know your names and stick to them. Do not be deluded in any way, shape, or form thinking that you're going to, that you're better than the first wife. Do not ever delude yourself thinking that you're going to replace the first wife. And even when you do, which rarely happens, the first wife will always have priority. The first wife will, will, is often mostly recognized even by the family. So just, mm -mm, just I will not, I will not recommend zero stars, zero stars. All right. So anyhow, um, so my unpopular opinion here is that I do get the dynamic, and unfortunately, another thing before I forget. Toxicity is very addictive and Karenyamu seems to be very toxic. So does Samito. So when the two come together, it just combusts, you know. And the thing with toxic relationships is that when the things are good, when the highs are high, they are really high and really good. When things are bad, they are really low. And so your hormones and your emotions are constantly up and down, up and down, up and down, that you get so addicted and so used to that up and down that you're not, you find normal relationships to be boring. And that could be the thing, actually. He might be seeing the weapons like, yeah, this is just kawaii, you know. 
this is so normal now excitement here in that sense in terms of toxicity which is very sad actually when you think about it so samido might also benefit from counseling to truly understand what is it about him that draws him to somebody who's that toxic okay because ultimately we attract so many people as human beings but it's the people we choose to let them into our lives the people we choose to stay that is where now we need to really investigate what the issue is and for 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 samido and karenyamu the fact that the two of them can be quite toxic and they find it appealing in each other there's there's that that that's not healthy at all i'm even trying to imagine what the kids feel and what the kids are experiencing and right now they are still pretty um particularly some uh karenyamu's kids with samido but i'm just it's when they'll, they'll grow up and they'll get to read these things and they'll get to see them in the in the newspapers and all these other things and it's just it's really 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 sad you know it's really really sad but anyhow my unpopular opinion again <laughs> i do not agree with it but i do get it i do get the fact that you know there's a certain appeal to Karenyamu. There genuinely is a certain appeal to Karenyamu. I'd like to be a fly on the wall and just watch her. <laughs> she seems to be somebody who's fun, yeah? Oh, sorry, this is my hair after I've done it. So I'm just going to part it and then um, spray. Sorry, let me first oil my scalp. Well, this is a mix of uh, about how many oils? Let's see, avocado. Uh, coconut, avocado, coconut, uh, what's this, black castor and castor and um, jojoba, is it jojoba, jojoba, <laughs> so yeah, that's what is inside here, so I've just lightly oiled my scalp, um, then I will, again this is plain water, then I will lightly spritz some water on the hair, makes it easy to detangle because I do not want to hurt my, 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 myself in the process. So just slightly massaging the oil on my scalp. I'm going to use this as my mirror. So. <laughs> And there you go. Easy peasy. That's why I love sister lots. It's so easy to maintain. And if you're like me who doesn't generally like styling hair, um, you just need to do a braid out and you're good to go. I personally love braid outs. The curls are very nice and soft. Um, Yeah. And yes, I still look pretty without makeup on. I know. <laughs> oh, my outfit is a pencil. It's a sweater dress. I got it from, where did I get it from? Trendy Threads. Yes, they are in Hazina Towers, ground floor. They have very nice pieces. So this is a very, it's very warm. And then it's so soft. It feels like, um, you know, like, um, what do you call it? like a doll like i'm hugging myself i don't know it's just soft to feel and you know <laughs> and i'm being cheeky um i got this from where did i get it ah forgotten is it super cosmetics yes super cosmetics on my on kimati street super cosmetics on on kimati street yeah so that's what i'm wearing today a very simple outfit because it's a bit chilly to do they can see the sun peeking out a bit but yeah so it's a bit a bit just slightly chilly so this is me just trying to beat the weather so yes uh so that's my unpopular opinion about those three uh, i would not want to personally i would not want to be in a that it's very toxic it's a very toxic dynamic to be quite honest very unfair on the first wife um very inhumane i might add but at the same time i do get why he's doing what he's doing i don't agree with it and i mean who cares whether i agree or we agree with it it's their life 
by the end of the day you find that toxic relationships can be very addictive for those who've been in toxic relationships just think back at how addictive it was and even after leaving at some point it's like you almost get used to the toxicity and the highs and the lows you almost miss you know that up and down kind of dynamic which is very sad to be honest so it's a very toxic situation but yes um she's actually quite appealing to be honest uh karen Yamu is quite appealing and of course another thing i forgot to mention Karen Yamu actually, because she's a senator, she actually elevates him, elevates his status, elevates um, his position in society in the sense that he gets more, how can I put it, not clout per se, but yeah, he gets more visibility and more clout. I mean, he was already famous, he was already known, particularly in, in his community, but now more importantly, because he's dating a senator who's well-known, and not just any senator, but a senator who's not only beautiful, uh, well-read, but also quite toxic and dramatic, I guess that actually puts him on another level and it's actually good for his brand when you think about it in terms of visibility however depending on how he chooses to go about this issue I, I, i've seen some people online uh, comparing karen Yamu to delilah and uh, what's her name jezebel <laughs> And saying that that's how great men fall so yes depending on how he chooses to carry out this relationship it might actually be his downfall yeah so this might come as a cautionary tale to him to be very very careful about he chooses how he chooses to to carry out this particular relationship but anyway that's it for today please let me know if there's any other celebrity um local celebrity couple or dynamic or whatever you want me to you want me to analyze and yeah so i'll see you next time toodles